just a little bit earlier, I talked about how I wrote this paper on um, this SCADA network design that I came up with for a safety network or a backup network um, that uses uh, blockchain to guarantee sensor readings. At least in this example, it was for a natural, natural gas pipeline. <clears throat> so I thought some of you guys, especially the super nerds, um, might be interested in um, this idea of a, um, a backup network which uses blockchain. So basically what happens is you have a sensor right here along the pipeline that has a bunch of different values. And um, as it's reading these values, it's constantly putting them inside this RTU right here. And uh, it's called a remote terminal unit. And that's the, it could be different things, but in this implementation, it's definitely an RTU. Um, so when it, so these are, so it's constantly taking in sensor measurements and it's constantly sending them wirelessly in this situation um in the other situation it was wired um and i, I but in in reality a lot of the time or usually it's wireless at least in this situation so here's the wired version so um there's the safety network that um is has has a blockchain and it's constantly adding the values to the to the blockchain and this will have multiple sensor measurements instead of directly sending it each time it takes a measurement it's going to actually store it in a block inside this little computer and then when it's its turn it's going to send all those measurements at once to all everyone else and then and then pass the token and this one's going to send all the measurements it's been taking and then it's gonna it's gonna send the blockchain around, and then they're gonna all guarantee. Okay, yeah, I have the same information as you. And then it's gonna pass the token, and then so this one's gonna say, okay, here are all the measurements I've been taking while I didn't have the token. So um, that's basically the idea. But one of the big things is having an air gap and having this unidirectional. Like it, it it's not a, this is a data diode. Um, you don't want data going back that way. You only want it going one way. And a lot of the time, like for, with this whole diagram, like you'll see this, these data diodes, which are, um, saying like physically on the physical layer, I don't want data to be allowed to go back that way. I only want it to go up. So this is actually way excessive, um, in its implementation of, of, um, of a SCADA backup network because, um, because the computers are constantly saying, okay, are you guys agreeing with this? Because what if they're far away and it's getting sent over the wire? And what if someone wants to get in the middle and say, I'm going to be you. I'm going to go fake like I'm you. Be you. Oh, my gosh. This game, this show the order. I went to be you. And that's our logo. But I guess you can use that logo, right? Anyways, so the conclusion that I reach at the end of this paper so you're thinking, oh, well, isn't that going to end up with a massive blockchain? Well, it's, it, I, I have a way of making it more lightweight by switching out the blockchain after a certain amount of days because we've already, like, the key is, like, we want to really have something gu guaranteeing that that is. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, you'd have to read the whole paper. But what uh, the conclusion that I reach at the end of this paper is, over the last decade, advancements in telecommun te telecommunications have led to a rise in distributed computing, both for b big big data processing and data storage. As networks become faster and storage devices become smaller, the benefit of storing more data in a distributed manner for many purposes will be realized. For cybersecurity professionals, advancements in distributed computing will both create more resilient storage platforms and allow software to crunch larger amounts of data. Additionally, more distributed storage platforms will make it possible for software to verify the integrity of programs present on different users' computers, making it more difficult for malware to hide. The concept <coughs> proposed in this paper for guaranteeing sensor readings on ICS networks is relatively simple. However, the concept may eventually be extended to apply to more complex problems such as D2D networks for self-driving cars, supply chain logistics, military communications technologies, and energy sharing over the smart grid. The applications of Bitcoin to the cybersecurity and information technology fields are still in their infancy. Nevertheless, it seems apparent that the future of computing is in the cloud. As technology progresses, it is likely that the cloud will become more than a server farm. It will be more and more distributed. The problem with massive distributed is what if you want to have massive encrypted distributed? Um, and you can do that, but then it would take up a lot of space because uh, encryption tends to bulk things up a lot. Um, so, 
Um, but as technology progresses, because I, I even talk about it here, like um, it says beating Moore's, Moore's law. So Gordon Moore predicted that computer processing would decrease in relative cost and increase in power at an exponential rate. Ever since technological progress has followed Moore's, law, Moore's prediction, even though it is theoretically impossible to break public key encryption, when extremely massive prime numbers are used, it can be argued that it is even more impossible to change the data in a blockchain after the integrity of the blockchain is resolved, especially if the computer uses an application firewall and a network IDS to monitor the safety network for anomalous traffic. Um, so, um, yeah, so that's... The point is, computers get faster, storage gets smaller, and um, if you can encrypt it, and, and and then also have massive storage, massive distributed storage, that'd be nice um, if you can guarantee the integrity of the encryption. Um, but for this situation specifically, I'm trying to make sure that no matter what, I know what those sensor readings are telling me is true, uh, which you can pretty much guarantee that without doing that because. Um, if you're really monitoring what's happening on the network and you're looking for anomalies, um, SCADA networks are pretty predictable. Um, the problem is it costs a lot of money to have big servers that do that sort of thing. Anyways, uh, hope you enjoyed <laughs> whatever I just said. Uh, for most of you guys, for, for, for even computer people, that's kind of hard to understand because um, ICS networks are different. They're, they're, they're more rigid.